Hello and welcome back to the Max Runout Shop. My name is Paul <coughs> and uh, today uh, we got a little video about uh, repairing uh, a drill chuck. Uh, this is one uh, that I bought uh, at uh, a, a swap meet last spring actually and uh, it's a Jacobs uh, Super Chuck and uh, it's one that uh, uh, I was attracted to because it's a three-quarter inch chuck and it'll fit nicely. It had a, a straight uh, three-quarter inch shaft on it as well so it fit nicely in my mill and uh, I thought it was something I could really use and it really seemed like a bargain at the time. Uh, but when I got it home I got a surprise. Uh, the, uh, the chuck key, it's, it's fixed now, but the chuck key would not fit in, uh, would not, the gears wouldn't mesh. So my first thought was well you know, it got mixed up. I got it out of a, a box full of chucks of various sizes, and uh, I thought somehow, uh, I mean, it was gripped in the, in the jaws, but somehow it had gotten mixed up, and, uh, you know, maybe, uh, uh, but uh, then uh, I noticed also that uh, on the top here, uh, it looked like the outer, uh, uh, outer ring here was not in its proper position up against the top of this. Uh, it was sitting down a little bit and that is why the chuck key wouldn't fit. It just, uh, uh, the gears, or this, the teeth on this ring were too low to fit in the gear and that's why it wouldn't slip in there. So that, then I uh, started thinking, well, maybe my bargain wasn't such a bargain. I, uh, uh, my, my first thought was that uh, somebody had taken it apart and uh, found some, uh, difficulty inside and couldn't get it all the way back together and uh, I was uh, I was worried at that point so uh, it ended up uh, sitting uh, on my desk uh, giving me dirty looks for uh, uh, nine months or so and uh, but when I uh, built the, uh, the press that I built the hydraulic press that I built in my last video um, I decided, well, here's a, uh, when, it, when I finished it, uh, I decided I, this would be an opportunity to give a test to the hydraulic press. This would be my first project on that to take the chuck apart. And uh, so I did, and uh, I'll show you a little uh, clip of that. You can see that uh, right up here, this outer sleeve is not pressed up far enough. So I'm going to take it apart and uh, that's going to be a good test for the uh, first trial of this, uh, this press because that's just what you need for doing this kind of job. <clears throat> Let's start with it up there and uh, I had a, a piece here that I machined out to fit over the top of this and just just uh, sit on the uh, outer sleeve so we can try pressing that out and uh, this is just another piece that I had laying around a piece of pipe so we'll see uh, <coughs> what we can get here And the chuck is apart. I'm not going to go any further with it right now. Uh, so you can see uh, how I used the press to slip the outer ring off. and uh, But I didn't take it any further at the time because I was uh, intent on finishing the last few details on the press. So it sat there for another several weeks uh, apart but not even really examined. 
And so now we're going to start uh, looking at uh, how I examined the chuck and, uh, and started to clean it up and, uh, and uh, do whatever repairs were necessary. Um, I know this uh, thing is, uh, has a lot of loose individual ball bearings in it, so I don't want to lose any, so we're going to put it in a... <clears throat> we're going to put it in a pie tin here. I'll back you up a little bit. I hope that isn't going to blow out the camera. And see what we can see. <clears throat> oh yeah. There is uh, a whole series of ball bearings in there and the good news is they appear to all be there. Um, there's a slot here where you can pull them out and but they're all around the outside. Now let's go back in a little bit. You can see the, I think you can see the individual ball bearings all in a row here. And uh, if we're going to clean this thing up, there's it's got some pretty ugly, uh, almost solidified old grease on it. So first uh, thing we got to do is uh, get the ball bearings out. <clears throat> All the parts uh, look pretty good in, in here. No rust or corrosion or anything, or very little. And uh, the uh, the main thing it needs, I think, is a good cleanup. This is a number 18N Jacobs Super Chuck. Works from eighth inch to three quarters of an inch. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but <clears throat> so let's get the uh, this this is a split ring down here, and uh, I think if I pull that apart, it'll release all the the uh, balls. But it might be just a little bit easier if I uh, just take them all one at a time. Less chance of losing one anyway. Uh, this uh, dental pick ought to do the trick for extracting the the, uh, the balls here. The, uh, uh, the lady that, uh, that dental hygienist that does my uh, uh, teeth, uh, I mentioned to her one time how useful these things could be, and she said, "Oh golly, we uh, when they get worn out, we throw them out. So uh, uh, you know, maybe I could save some." Uh, some for you. So each time I get my teeth cleaned, she's got a couple more of these for me, and uh, that uh, I got quite a pile of them now, and they really are useful. <clears throat> okay, let's see if I can do this where you can see what I'm doing. Um, You see how gooey that grease is. They just hang on. Some of them don't seem like they want to move at all. So this will take me a while. I will uh, I will fish these out and uh, then we'll come back. The next step uh, is going to be to remove this split ring <coughs> so we can uh, take the rest of it apart. Oh, that was easy. <coughs> This is, uh, let's see, yeah, this has got a race on one side for the, uh, uh, the balls, and uh, uh, on the other side it's flat, so I won't be able to get that on upside down. And uh, there's the other one, other half. Now, um, we need to get the the jaws out, and I think.
think to do that there's another piece here is going to have to slide off down this way maybe this whole I guess this whole piece will go down <clears throat> might have to tap that a little bit to get it to move <clears throat> I'll get the right tools and I'll be back. Okay, while the um, while I was looking for the right tool, the uh, upper race for the bearings just dropped down and got out of the way. So we're done with that. That turned out to be easier than I thought. Now the next uh, thing I'm going to do is pull out the uh, jaws. And uh, to do that, or before I do that, I want to mark the... Um, the jaw, uh, the individual jaws, because uh, uh, I suspect there's a clocking order that they have to go in, and otherwise they won't close at the at the right time. And uh, so I'm gonna we'll take this out of here. And uh, I started it. Uh, I used my uh, uh, spring-loaded center punch to put a a single punch mark on this one. We'll call it number one. And now I'm going to push the uh, uh, jaw out of there, and I will mark the jaw number one. There we go. So the jaw has tended to be, uh, turned out to be uh, too hard uh, for my uh, center punch. Uh, it, it just wouldn't make a mark on them. And uh, so I, I was able to uh, mark them, though, with a scribe. It, I don't know, I doubt you can see this on camera, but I put a single scratch in one in number one and a, two scratches in number two. I don't know if that's going to show up or not. But anyway, I got them marked. Number three will have no scratches at all. That'll make my job easier. <coughs> and so with that, we got it apart. <clears throat> so there's all the parts. Um, the next job is to, uh, everything looks to be in good shape. I don't see any, any problems with, the, uh, with any of the individual parts. I mean, uh, jaws are a little worn, but they're not bad. <clears throat> Right at the tip here, I can see that it's worn a bit. Um, but I believe they're all right. And the uh, <coughs> everything looks okay. Uh, the next job is to clean everything up. I'm not going to put you through that. I'll uh, get that done, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, come back and. Uh, See if we can get it back together. <clears throat> Two days later now, um, and we got the parts all cleaned up, um, and I bathed them in a light coating of uh, WD-40 to keep the, the water and the rust away. And meanwhile, I've had uh, the ball bearings soaking in a bath of WD-40. And uh, they ought to be clean by now. We're going <clears> to <throat> dump this out. Put the uh, bearings on a clean towel there. <clears throat> so they 
should be ready to go once they're dried off. We're going to put the draws back in, being careful to uh, <coughs> match them to the, the marks that we made on both of the jaw itself and on the, uh, the uh, spot where it goes uh, through the top. And uh, that's number one. And let's see. This one is number two. And we'll get jaw number two. And the one left has got to be number three. <clears throat> now these uh, have to be <clears throat> in the same position up and down um, so that the, uh, the timing is right. <clears throat> so I'm going to just uh, push them down hard against the, the uh, table here. I'll back up to the part well here uh, push them down holding this down push them down firmly against the table so they should all be in the same position or close to it now we need to put on the <coughs> upper race keeping the the uh, groove for the Bearing uh, bearings down are down like this, so it'll go against the bearings. We can, should be able to slide that on. We can, and then below that, I'm going to set this on its side here for the time being. <coughs> below that, we've got to put in the um, the lower race, which of course is a split. piece and that you can see that leaves the space for the the bearings to go between here. So I'm going to turn this over and I'll put the other half of the lower race in here and these two parts fit together so that there's a small gap on each side. And now we need to get the bearings back in that space. Okay, we put a blob of grease in the pan here where the bearings are stored and uh, we're going to try to pick them up one at a time and get them into the little slot there. Get a little grease on each one. Boy, is this fun or what? Okay, 
I think you get the idea. We'll come back when we got uh, most or all of them uh, in there. Okay, we managed to uh, get all of the uh, balls back in there without uh, dropping any on the floor, which is pretty surprising when you think about it. Um, so we've got the <coughs> outside uh, case. We greased the inside of that. We greased that, packed that groove uh, with grease. So uh, we should be ready to put it back together. So uh, we'll go over to the uh, uh, the hydraulic press and get set to do just that. Okay, we're set up in the uh, in the hydraulic press and uh, let's get ready to press that guy on. <coughs> Okay, that looks like that's it. So here we are back on the bench and uh, looking good. The, uh, <coughs> a few <coughs> spots of grease to wipe off here, but uh, <coughs> this uh, is the original Chuck key or the one that, one that came with it anyway uh, when I bought it. Um, and let's see. Yes, it does. Drops right in there like it's supposed to. Um, frankly, this Chuck key looks like it had a bit of a hard life. It's been bent and twisted and whatever, so <coughs> I went out and bought a new one. This is one bought from McMaster Car that's supposed to fit this, and it does. So uh, I think we're all set. We're going to be doing some. Uh, I think this thing is going to help me a lot with uh, power tapping because with the ball bearing chuck we'll be able to tighten it up better on the on the uh, uh, on the taps and uh, hopefully we'll get a, a better grip and uh, we'll have a little more success with power tapping. I've got the uh, chuck in my uh, Bridgeport vertical mill now and I'm just looking at uh, how well it works. It runs run smoothly through its uh, whole range of uh, sizes and uh, it uh, I like the way it works and it looks and of course the, the chuck key fits fine in there now so uh, I'm happy with that yeah but I wanted to look at one more thing and that's his uh, uh, what the run out looks like on the chuck I don't know if it's bent or crooked in some way, so uh, we're going to take a look at uh, that next. We've got the mill in uh, back mirror now, and uh, turning real slow, and I was just looking at the uh, run out when I look right at the uh, at the collet, and uh, you can see that uh, if I zoom in, you can see that uh, it's less than a thousandth right there. Uh, and now, uh, if we bring the uh, if we bring the the, uh, the gauge down to uh, <coughs> about three four inches where it might be with the uh, with the chuck. <coughs> You can still uh, you can see that it's uh, still uh, only about two thousandths. Uh, I'm not sure uh, this rod that's uh, in there um, is just a piece that I got from the scrap, so I'm not sure how straight that is. And I'm also uh, the collet uh, is part of a, a group that came with the machine when I bought it, and it was an old bunch of old assorted collets from the uh, 
the shop uh, where I got it from, so I'm not really at all sure that uh, that the uh, collet is real square either, but that gives you an idea how the machine is uh, looks without the chuck. So now we got the chuck in there, our uh, new uh, repaired chuck, and uh, uh, we're looking at uh, the run out uh, uh, just below the uh, where the, the uh, uh, chuck key fits in, and uh, let's have a little closer look at that. You're looking at uh, something in the neighborhood of a thousand. Uh, so man, I'm real happy with that. Uh, the uh, the truck and also the the, uh, the part that goes into the uh, uh, into the collet uh, is nice and straight. I'll try one more thing. I'll put uh, uh, a drill bit in there and we'll see what that uh, looks like. All right, now we've got the uh, uh, the uh, what's a half inch milling cutter uh, in the truck. And we're looking at the run out there, and uh, you can see it's maybe a little over a thousandth, plus or minus a half a thousandth, or six tenths or something like that. So, boy, I'm really happy with my new truck. I'm glad I uh, picked that thing up, and uh, uh, that's going to be a nice addition to the shop. To the shop. So uh, we got. Uh, Minimum run out on the max run out channel. How about that? Um, I'm uh, really, like I said, I was really pleased with uh, with how that came out and how accurate the chuck is. So it's going to become a valuable part of my uh, shop, and I'm glad I decided to make the effort to take it apart and uh, and repair it. So uh, if you uh, got any comments, uh, uh, let me know, and uh, my uh, my email is uh, is maxrunout at gmail dot com, and uh, if you got any questions or whatever, you can give me drop me a note there. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon.